3D printer from the ground up. Um, we got a kit from here in China, and it's, it came with some basic instructions, um, a manual. Uh, the students are now putting together that 3D printer. We help interpret the manual, we help problem solve, we offer solutions. Um, we've had the engineers in a couple of times to get the kids started when they get to a sticky point. But basically they just come in and they're just building. We started doing lots of scratch activities uh, and then that moved to Code Avengers. They've been learning about HTML coding and so they've actually been able to use what they've learned from our coding sessions uh, to tie in with blogging. In our uh, fourth graders have been working on um, designing um, jewelry using a uh, 3D app and then uh, 3D printing them. I think it's really important to showcase to an authentic audience um, because it allows for um, our students to um, see that there's value placed on their work. Well, when you look at um, an e-portfolio, it's basically a compilation of their favorite work. This year, my students created their own completely. Instead of saving all of the work till the end of the year, most of the kindergartners had forgotten about it. So when we do an e-portfolio, they just take a picture of it and they say, oh, I really want this in my, my e-portfolio, and then they send it home. I think a lot of times um, they have questions that they might be afraid to ask in class or that they just need a little more time to work out. And so if they can see a teacher work through the problem and they can watch it over and over again, um, or they can slow it down or they can take the time to practice it with that guidance that they might not be getting one-on-one -on -one in a classroom, that's really helpful. So the differentiation that comes out of this is just so natural in the process and really, um, it really just um, is fulfilling as a teacher to know that you're meeting a student where they're ready to learn. I wanted it to be a passion project and that's how it kind of came about. <laughs> These projects are unbelievable, and they have been coming in before school starts. Like, Mrs. B, can we come in? Can we stay inside during morning recess? I'm like, sure. <laughs> you know, you don't want to ever say no to learning. Um, they use uh, an app called Moxtra, where they're keeping track of their workout. They also have videos uh, that they can compare themselves to. I'm always giving them feedback on Moxtra. I'm also putting pictures and video that I take as I walk around onto their binders. You know, usually they just want to play dodgeball or volleyball or basketball, but they are really concerned about improving their bodies and improving their health. Paper Desk app gives them many ways to express their ideas. So those who are ready, write, and ELL students like our French student, she used the audio to record her ideas. And then yesterday she decided to use the keyboard to type, so she took the risk. So in writing workshop, the kids are, um, they're writing sm small moment stories, and so they go through the whole process of editing and revising and choosing a piece and publishing it in a hard copy, and then we took that and made it into an education. They were able to add their own expression to it and the emphasis that they intended when they wrote it, and then they can share that as well um, with family that's not here in China. Um, we've had a tremendous response to our online publishing party. Um, parents did a great job of helping share the link of each individual blog. So we had grandparents and aunts and uncles from all over the world coming in and commenting and um, creating their own posts, inspiring new ideas. So um, it's been really fun. Their level of commitment to really doing their best work in publishing has increased. In this particular class, we did some digital storytelling for uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, William Shakespeare's. And um, rather than having the kids read the entire play from start to finish and do a sort of a dry, drudgery version of Shakespeare, which is too often the case, what they did was they chose a scene and um, they infused it with their own language, they infused it with their own choice of images. Some of it was live action, some of it was animated. And so what we ended up with was this just beautiful um, arsenal, for lack of a better word, of, of just fantastic um, uh, reimagined snippets from the play. Uh, Yearbook Club has been off to a great start. It's our second year with iBooks Author. Um, so we have actually just finished the print book and we're getting ready to upload the digital book to the uh, App Store. The printed book was still getting made. Uh, what the digital yearbook did was allow us to transform the process. Um, I created a Facebook page um, and called it Canoflic Fit and the idea was to get my kids to start working out outside of PE class. It's huge. I mean, the, the kids who are actively posting are actively doing, and the support that they're giving is, is awesome. 
Um, I have one student actually, she's over here. She, uh, she did um, on her last fitness test, on her last uh, sit-up test, she did 40 sit-ups. And she did a 30-day ab challenge. And at the end of that 30 day, we had another um, fitness test. She was able to do 145 sit-ups. We're working on developing global citizens in our class and uh, through the use of Writers Workshop and Twitter as our platform. The exciting part is seeing the children um, want to go onto Twitter, want to write, want to connect with other classes and uh, want to share what they're learning in the classroom. Social media can connect us in so many different ways. So we started early by hooking up with a class from the graded school of Sao Paulo in Brazil and they became instant buddies and they started a Google Doc together where they created their own projects sharing what about the classroom. That stemmed out to some collaboration with a school now in Bahrain, all via links that I found through Twitter. But I blog because I want to engage in what's happening in the world and I want the people to know that there's something relevant that I'm talking about and I'm modeling that ability to communicate effectively. I preach it to my kids and I want them to be able to do it themselves. Um, so blogging has been a huge tool in which I can bring that to the forefront um, and, and connect. Uh, I love Twitter because it's kind of cool. We get a dialogue with people all around the world and the SIS rocks we can get a snapshot of what's happening throughout the school without leaving our classroom. Well, I think we have a community here and we learn from each other. So I think it's important to share the learning that is happening in the classroom. Both my teaching and the students' learning is not been limited in the classroom. That's what I love. Because this is such a huge stage for us to explore. We are collaborators. We are independent learners. We are communicators. We are global citizens. We are complex thinkers. At SIS. At SIS. 在蛇口国际学校。